Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer. I was asked by one of my viewers what I thought about the SE, the SE Ironheart, the kitchen range that I've got, the wood burning stove, uh, to put it in so many different ways now that I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Uh, this little beast, what it's like having had it for a year. Um, last November it was, I plumbed it in with my friend Richard Suggett. I'd had a Rayburn a long time before then, uh, about 20 years previously, for about two years. The Rayburn had been uh, given to us, it was sitting in somebody's back garden and uh, it was in a dilapidated state but we managed when I was married with small children to run it for about two years. We ran it on coal and some logs, though mainly coal. Um, I was lucky enough when I moved into this house, oh now 28 years ago, that there was a chimney just here in the kitchen and um, it meant that uh, you know you could bung in a range of some description and I assume when the house was built in the Victorian period that is exactly what they did. Um, and it, obviously we're now in modern day and most people have things like electricity or gas. Uh, and when we ran the Rayburn, we, we just wanted to have that slightly old fashioned feel. I'd known people who had Argus and I loved the heat and I loved the way they cooked. And so that's what inspired me back then to, to go for it, to seeing as we were offered this thing for free. Well, it fell to bits in the end, and, and so that was no good. So when I had a little bit of inheritance money and the opportunity to buy a new range, something that I'd been looking forward to, because in the interim, we just had a gas cooker, a basic, you know, simple gas cooker with the grill up here at eye level and four simple rings. And it, it did us proud for the rest of the time. But given this opportunity to go and buy something that I really love and the, and the lifestyle that I really wanted to be able to have wood burning stove to cook on with sustainable wood that you buy from a local wood yard or a, you know, a log provider um, who are getting their wood from lots of different sources, I gather, but, uh, you know, coppiced wood being one of them as a sustainable product, I was very keen to do that. I don't burn coal, and I haven't burnt coal in my SE Ironheart. Now, it wasn't a cheap thing to buy. It was about three and a half grand when I bought it. So that's a huge investment. And so this is really about how I feel about it after the event, after a year of using it, going through the winter and going through the summer, uh, and now the autumn, and we're coming back into the winter and what, what has it been like and has it achieved all those things that I was looking for? One of the first tasks I have to do is clean out the SE. Um, I don't run it 24-7. Uh, generally I found that it is an expensive way to uh, gobble up wood. I only burn wood and it's, uh, it, it seems to be a bit daft having it running overnight, although you can bed it down. In the winter, I was just about managing that. Um, but on the whole, I found that the, the heat that you generate, if you leave it to, to, I suppose, stop putting wood on at about 10 or 11 at night, the heat is sustained in the house uh, for the morning, which is, which is good, and plenty of hot water because it, it runs hot water as well. So I usually have to clean it out by knocking the ash through into the ash pan below and then once I've done that I empty the ash pan and put it in the, um, in the, in the bin. Now I, I understand that you can use the ash on your garden, I don't really have much of a garden so um, if anybody wants some ash just let me know. Another aspect of this particular stove is it has this rather smashing uh, piece of glass here so that you can see into the fire. That's what attracted me to having the SE in the first place because 
um, it's all very well having a, a wood-burning stove but if you can't see the fire there's um, there's something missing in my opinion there's something ethereal or something magical I don't know how to describe it really but just seeing the flames it it sort of adds to the warmth in many ways now it does come with a glass but I find that the glass gets uh, dirty most of the time with soot and what have you and it does need cleaning now you can clean it I know that the old the old way was to put a bit of ash onto the a cloth and give it a clean that way and that works reasonably well another option is to use I use a spray which gets it clean and that uh, it, it seems to work very well for me I wear gloves for this because this is an oven cleaner and the chemicals in there are pretty uh, potent I usually have the door open as well just to allow a bit of fresh air I use a little bit of wire wool and I just give it a little brush along like this and it really does lift off all the muck and it keeps that glass pretty clear I think the advice I don't know is to make sure I use a bit of water with it by the way uh, is to make sure that the um, the wire brush and the glass always is wet otherwise I think you do get scratches and I use a sponge simply to remove the excess of the the, uh, me the part of the whatever it is the cleaning fluid and hello you get a nice clean view you can uh, further clean it if you so wish I don't overly bother because it gets in a bit of a mess uh, with a cloth and, and what have you and there it and there it is pretty much it's definitely a a lifestyle choice having a range it's a completely different um, experience than your normal instant cooking there's the whole process with it and you've got to put up with a lot of stuff like dust and ash uh, what do you call it? wood shavings and that sort of stuff all over the place not just in the kitchen but also in the garden it's a faff it, you, you know it is without doubt not something that a lot of people would want to do but for me there's something I don't know there's something traditional there's something primeval even about it there's something about real fire cooking food that is part of the human experience and in our modern world that we live in where everything is sort of done by computer or is is without our control this for me is a way of having some control in the most fundamental way in my own house and I love it I, uh, I have logs delivered uh, they're about um, 70 pounds for a meter square industrial bag which is sometimes I'm lucky enough to get it winched over the back gate sometimes they're just delivered beside the back gate and I have to throw them all in uh, which can be a bit time consuming um, as you can see I've got a knackered old bit of tarpaulin I need to buy a, a nice new one to keep all the wood dry at the moment it's just piled up in the back garden I try to stack them up and I've got this little temporary um, log shelf which is where I tend to put them into and then go to the SE with them so they start here and they work their way down so they're more accessible by the back door Okay, uh, so I chop my own kindling you can buy bags of kindling of course and uh, people often you know very familiar with fire lighting and stuff at Christmas when a lot of people perhaps will get their fires going and and have a few days over the Christmas period when you're doing this as an everyday thing it's, it's very different you just get into a routine and actually it doesn't take very long at all but it's just something that you do so I sometimes use old bits of timber and I collect those up and other times I'll just use you know the stuff that uh, is off the logs just cut them into small bits of kindling and away you go I use an ordinary uh, fire lighter of course with matches and I tend to spend a bit of time on your knees in this game I tend to make up 
a, a little tower on the inside with the tiny smallest bits and the driest bits of kindling and then get the fire lighter in there and light it and add all the other stuff to it until you've got a lovely blaze. Get a little bit of smoke in the room, you get used to that. Try not to get too much, of course. Make sure all the vents are open and so you get the maximum air coming in just to get everything going. And it doesn't take long at all. I suppose the question everybody wants to know is, does this save me any money or is it costing me more? And that's a, an interesting equation that after a year, I can't answer fully. I have uh, my son who lives in the house with me and his girlfriend. And when I'm not here, they don't like the SE. They'll use uh, a portable electric cooker, which is an induction cooker, which I've got for them. They're not really keen on dealing with the SE. They then switch the immersion heater on as well which heats up the water. So if I'm here on completely on my own, this beautiful piece of equipment will, will cook stuff nicely, wonderfully. It'll keep me warm. It'll warm up part of the house. I've got another little wood burning stove in the front room, which is my office. It will also heat up the water um, and it heats up the water much more efficiently than the immersion because it'll heat it up but the heat just continues even when you stop putting the logs on the heat is still uh, coming through the pipes for quite some time afterwards so if I wasn't using the electric in the way if I wasn't using the kettle if I wasn't using the immersion heater and if my son's were my son rather wasn't using his electric fire in his room I definitely I think would be saving a bit of money but not a lot the other thing of course is what I particularly love about this, and it's not everybody's cup of tea, uh, don't do that when it's hot by the way, is I can hang my washing on a wet and miserable day like this, quite happily, and it's costing me nothing. I don't have to use a tumble dryer, which of course is very expensive. Oops. My uh, little... So I've got a bit of rope along the top on the roof here, the ceiling, and it's great. I can get my shirts, my smalls, and all my stuff done. Um, and so I love that very much. So is it worth it? Is it worth it? I love it. I absolutely love the, the actual, the SE, this whole lifestyle business, the chopping of the wood, the going out there, even when it's raining. It, it's, it's not going to be for everybody. And you know, you've got to have a serious thought with yourself if it's the sort of thing you want. But I run it, uh, as I say, probably light at about five o'clock in the summer and I switch it off about 9 and 10 or stop putting fuel on in the, in the evenings. Um, in the winter it's now lunchtime so I'm starting now to run it from lunchtime and then I'll again switch it let it run out about 10 and 11. It'll just keep the house warm. If it's really bitterly cold yes I'll run it all the way 24 7 stock it up with some logs, um, ash or oak. Oak is very good for the uh, overnight stuff I found. Um, I understand beech is quite good. I've not really burnt beech. I've just stuck with ash and oak um, and other bits and pieces that have come my way. So yeah, I do love it. Um, I thoroughly recommend it if it's what you want, but a year on in, I'm more than happy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow, like, subscribe, become a patron, support what I do, and um, we'll come up with some more interesting videos. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.